Hello everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at this HP Stream 11. This is actually the first generation of the Stream 11, and it came out in, I believe, 2014. When this machine came out, it came with Windows 8 installed on it. Now that's a little interesting for a machine of this size, as this computer was actually aimed at the market of anyone who was looking for a Chromebook at the time. Being able to run Windows on one of these small, lightweight, portable machines not the exact same thing as a netbook, but it's like a Chromebook, except it runs Windows. So it's kind of a mixture of a Chromebook and a netbook. It's like a really cheap laptop computer, and I believe when these came out they were only about $200, and you got a decent amount of stuff for that price. So what is inside of this machine? We have a Intel Celeron running at 2.16 GHz that is a dual core processor. Of course we have the 11.6 inch widescreen display with a resolution of 1366 by 768 and that is driven by the Intel HD graphics which uses 1 GB of video memory. Now I don't know if that is dedicated or if it shares that with the actual video memory and it probably varies while the machine is running because it actually for the machine itself has two gigabytes of ram and that is not user upgradable and yes that is a small amount but believe it or not it actually works okay with this machine again with the non-user upgradability we have a 32 gigabyte ssd it's not as fast as an ssd it's actually also soldered directly to the motherboard but it's a lower quality, slower type of SSD. But again, for $200, you're getting a decent amount of stuff here, and it does the job for someone who might need a Windows machine that can run, you know, Word and things like that for school or college if you're, you know, strapped for cash and don't have enough money to buy a more uh, powerful machine. So anyway, let's go ahead and take a look around. On the front of the machine, it may be really hard to see, but we have stereo speakers. And I'll actually pick up the machine here so maybe you can see them. They're right under here. And if we flip it over, we can go ahead and see them a little bit easier. We have one down here in either corner, so they kind of fire down at the table or surface that you may be using and then fire back up at you so you can hear your audio. However, it might be a little bit of a problem if you're using it on your lap it may muffle the sound. On the left hand side of the machine we will find our Kensington lock port in addition to our charging port and an SD card slot. The models that came after this one actually came with a micro SD card slot but it definitely is nice to have a full size SD card slot here instead of the micro SD card because you can of course use an adapter to use the smaller versions as well. On the right hand side of the machine we will find a power indicator light, audio out and audio in. You can see there it says that you can use like a headset with a microphone built into it kind of like the ear uh, sets that come with your cell phone and you can plug that in so you can use both the headphones and microphone. Next to that we have a USB 2.0 port and a USB 3.0 port and HDMI video out. So a pretty nice selection of uh, ports here on this machine. Taking a quick look at the back of the machine we will find the Hewlett Packard labeling. Opening the machine up we will find our 11.6 inch widescreen display. Above that we will find our webcam in addition to a status indicator light to the left hand side of it. As you may see on the left and right hand sides of the camera we have dual microphones and below the screen we will find the HP logo. Below the screen we will of course find our keyboard which actually works pretty decent on this machine. In the upper left hand corner we will find our power button and of course down below here we will find our trackpad which is a pretty nice size for this computer. Of course we don't have physical buttons but that's okay you just push down on it like you would a uh, trackpad on a MacBook or a MacBook Pro. A little side note is that in each generation of these Stream 11s and 13 inch versions as well they seem to change the design down here. You can see this one has little dots everywhere. I believe the generation after this one had stripes or something like that. 
So let's go ahead and turn this thing on. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn this thing on. Here we go. So we're up and running here. I decided to pull back the camera on this particular screen because if I do it at just the right distance it won't have the checkerboard pattern. I could do that with some of my other videos too but it doesn't seem to work as well as it does here. So anyway that's why we're pulled back a little bit from the screen. It does look quite dim here but uh, in person it's not that at all. Let's see if we can brighten it up a bit. All it does is overly expose everything. Anyway, having only 32 gigabytes of storage limits this machine quite a bit. I am not able to install Office on here as it would take too much space. I mean, I could, but it would just be too much. So if we go and look, currently there's only uh, 10 gigabytes free. And that's with the operating system, all older versions of uh, anything that is not used for, by the operating system at all has all been wiped. I have gone through and wiped all kinds of stuff to make it this much space. So the only stuff that's installed on here is obviously the operating system and some applications being Firefox, Chrome, Avast for security, uh, Malwarebytes and things like that, iTunes. That's about it. There's not much else on this machine and as you can see there's not a lot of space left either. So you'd obviously need to get some type of external storage if you'd like to store a lot of data. Of course, there's not a lot of ways to uh, install other applications unless you really want to cram that uh, the space here. Like I said, this machine originally came with Windows 8.1. However, I have obviously upgraded that to Windows 10 through the upgrade program that they had in 2015 and 2016. And Windows 10 works absolutely fine on this machine. So, we'll go ahead and exit. Oh wait, I did want that actually. Let's go back and get it. We're going to right click here and get the properties of this machine. We can see the Intel Celeron processor here and our 2 gigabytes of memory. However, 1.89 of it is usable. So let's go ahead and open up Firefox here. This machine is fanless, so it is very quiet. And Firefox is obviously up to date here as well as Chrome. So we won't have any problems streaming or doing anything on the internet. So here is Firefox. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the lighting sites. And we'll go ahead and go to the gallery here. And we'll scroll on down. There we go. Not a problem. Everything works very well here on a basic web page. Of course, we can do YouTube as well. That's not an issue. Oh, probably help if I highlighted all the stuff. And here we are at YouTube, and that runs perfectly fine here. You can see the ad is going to come up here in just a second. And that runs just fine. See if we can uh, scroll down here a bit. And of course it's going to take just a second or two here for the thumbnails to load. But other than that, everything works absolutely fine. There we go. Nothing wrong here. 
YouTube works just fine. So does every other website that you're going to throw at this. I mean, after all, it is a pretty much modern machine. It's from 2014, 2015, so it's definitely up to date enough to do things on the internet. Obviously, you wouldn't want to do any gaming on this machine at all unless you have some really simple game or you're playing something on the internet. Uh, but yeah, there's not a lot of power here for any of that. It's just a basic machine for doing web browsing and maybe typing a paper if you can find the space to even install Office. Really weird, they should have given us a little bit more storage and I think the newer ones do have more storage. However, these original ones definitely don't have enough to add applications to make it even a little bit more useful. I mean, you can go online and use, you know, Office Online, but then you might as well just have a Chromebook to use whatever. But it definitely, definitely is better and nice to have a version of Windows, a full version of Windows at that. I mean, the new laptops that Microsoft recently came out with run Windows 10 S, which is a very restricted version of Windows. I mean, you can upgrade it for $50 to Windows 10 Pro, I believe. But, I mean, even on their own machine, they're not giving you a full version of Windows. Here, you have a full version of Windows. You can actually download apps from the internet, whereas on those, you can't. So that's kind of weird. But anyway, here's a full version of Windows. Very nice to have. So there's other applications on here too. Like I said, we have iTunes and some simple stuff like that. But of course, space gets taken up quite quickly. Anyway, this machine is fantastic if you'd like just a lightweight machine to do email, uh, you know, surf the internet, stuff like that. This is a fantastic machine for that. And you can actually store your things locally on the amount of storage that is there or on an SD card, which is also nice to have. Anyway, I really do hope you enjoyed this video of this uh, HP Stream 11. It definitely is an interesting machine, and I do like it better than Chromebooks. It's nice to have storage and things like that. Of course, not, a mu not lots of storage, but it's definitely there, and it's definitely nice to also have a full version of Windows. Once again, I really do hope you enjoyed, and also please comment, rate, and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching.